Well, I'm originally from Barbados, which is a tiny island in the Caribbean. Um, I've actually been in the United States since 1997. I've done all of my education since college till uh, recently fellowship in the United States. I was at uh, Mount Sinai School of Medicine in New York City. Then after that, I went to do my surgical residency, which is a five-year program at um, SUNY Downstate. It's short for State University of New York, and that, that's located in Brooklyn. And then I decided to do an additional year of training in minimally invasive surgery in Tulane in New Orleans. You know, I was always interested in the human body um, as a child. Um, my mother would tell you I would watch all the medical shows and stuff like that. Uh, I wasn't too sure when I actually entered medical school, but once I did my surgical rotation, um, I fell in love with it and decided that I wanted to become a surgeon. Being a female surgeon wasn't that big of a deal, at least with the residency. You know, your residency is five years. You go from an intern to a chief resident, and in my program, a lot of the residents were female. Uh, we actually did not have a lot of female attending so it was kind of hard to know exactly what the life was going to be like because there weren't too many people to ask but um, you know it's been interesting now that I moved down to Lumberton I realize how much different it is being a female surgeon. Um, there have been some obstacles sometimes. Uh, people are surprised when I introduce myself as a general surgeon and they ask, why are you doing that? I said, because I love it and I'm good at it. So um, that's why I do general surgery. And over time, you know, people have become more accepting um, patients. The female patients love it when I tell them I'm a surgeon. And so it's been going well. Minimally invasive surgery um, is a type of technology that's been um, employed for many years now. Essentially, instead of uh, making large incisions on the body, we make smaller incisions and use instruments um, about the size of a pencil um, to perform procedures. Um, there are different, many, many different types of instruments and different fields have different uh, specialties. Uh, one example is how, it, how it's changed things, for example, taking the gallbladder out or a cold cystectomy. Uh, before, that used to be an open procedure, meaning that you would have an incision underneath your rib cage on your right side, you would end up in the hospital for a couple of days, but now, because of laparoscopy or minimally invasive surgery, that's become an outpatient procedure. You come in, you get it done, and you go home the same day if there are no complications. I do most of my general surgery procedures, um, mostly on the abdomen, the breast, um, those are the uh, types of procedures I'm more interested in. Uh, general surgery itself is a very wide field. Um, you're trained at least in knowledge of every part of the body. Um, of course, there are different specialties, and nowadays surgery is becoming more and more specialized. So the general surgeon that does every single thing is kind of um, going away from what it was many years ago. Procedures that we can do laparoscopically, um, when a person comes in with appendicitis, we can take out the appendix laparoscopically. Um, gallbladders, we can remove laparoscopically. Uh, even surgeries on the stomach, uh, we can do laparoscopically. Um, you can fix hernias laparoscopically. Uh, people that have hernias either um, in the groin or um, on the surface of the stomach, you can do those laparoscopically. Pretty much anything that can be done open uh, nowadays can be do, done laparoscopically. Uh, some of them are more advanced that I don't do. For example, liver, liver surgery, you can do laparoscopically, but uh, it's a very highly specialized area and I don't uh, perform that, but it can be done. Anyone who's coming for surgery should always find out from the surgeon exactly you know, what they're planning to do and what problems can arise. You, know, you don't want to go to someone that's just going to tell you that, oh, you're going to have surgery and that's it. You need to know, understand all of the risks because you know, there's no such thing as a small surgery. Unfortunately, there are complications and you need to be aware of what they are. But um, you, know, you should be uh, aware of your overall health status. Um, things like that and be sure to ask questions. You know, if you don't understand the part of the body that the surgeon is talking about, just ask them and they should be able to explain it to you so you understand well why you need this done or why we're recommending that it should be done.